chapter 15 on Darwin's theory of evolution by natural selection. Uh, this video, we're just going to be a little bit shorter. We're just going to look at some of the evidence we have for evolution occurring. First up is fossil evidence. Again, fossils are evidence of creatures that have lived in the past. Uh, and if you look over here, there's usually six types of fossils, preserved remains, uh, trace fossils like a footprint, uh, cast fossils that are um, sort of laid in the ground, mold fossils, petrified fossils where they fill with minerals and become rock, and then also carbon film um, fossils. And from these fossils, we can glean a lot of information. A lot of times scientists sort of build a succession of creatures that have occurred from the past to the present. Uh, so this often shows descent from a common ancestor. Uh, your book <clears throat> points out a couple of examples. One is the uh, evolution of the whale um, going from a four-legged sort of croc type creature uh, crocodile alligator creature here, the Ambulocetus, um, how it's got hind legs, jaw. They talk about the nose hole up here at the front that slowly migrates towards the back to the blowhole on the whale. <clears throat> and also these hind limbs become reduced, and we still, and we'll talk about the stigial structures a little bit later, uh, but there's still that hip bone and stuff where they were attached. Uh, also, they talk about uh, kind of the evolutionary... Uh, intermediates or what we would call transitional fossils from a from a fish to more of uh, more of an amphibian type creature uh, where you're going to go from fins and scales to more of a skin uh, jointed ribs uh, you're losing your gills and going to more of lungs for breathing the eyes are moving from the side of the head to the top and this Ticatalic rosé um, is just kind of a fossil they have that's sort of a transitional fossil between the two. Um, so fossils provide us evidence where we can look back in the past and compare those creatures structurally uh, to current creatures and look for ancestors and, and uh, sort of uh, the horses often used as well. Number two is biogeo. Graphical evidence, uh, we talked about this already a little bit with Darwin, uh, but this often points to divergent evolution. Okay, so sort of the spreading out of that evolutionary tree where there's a common ancestor and then they become different. Uh, some different examples, the one I like to kind of use is uh, looking at the camels uh, where the original ancestors uh, kind of start here and as they move out across that Alaskan bridge into Asia and Africa. You have the Bactrian dromedary camels. Uh, and then as they sort of went south, then you have your llamas um, and alpacas and stuff like that uh, that are very related. And so it kind of shows out how they spread throughout kind of over the Earth's surface and adapt to in different environments. Uh, the big birds, uh, ostriches, okay, that are found in Africa. Rias, which are found in South America, the greater and lesser Rhea, uh, the Kiwis in New Zealand, the emus in Australia, uh, all these big birds, some that have even like in Africa gone extinct, are evidence of how critters, you know, a lot of times Pangaea when they were all together, uh, the marsupials is another one your book talks about. And as they developed, <clears throat> the landmass breaks apart. And so you've got pockets like South America and Australia, which used to be together, have large amounts of marsupials. Uh, but then as placental animals came down of, out of North America, across that Panamanian bridge, they sort of took over, were more successful than some of the marsupials in South America. Uh, the Galapagos Islands as well, you also see different kinds of turtles based on the habitat that's in that island. Uh, third thing we're going to look at, and actually we're, we have several things to talk about under this category of anatomical evidence, is as we look at an anatomical structures, uh, three things we want to look at is homologous structures, vestigial structures, and analogous structures. Homologous, just like the root word sounds, homologous meaning similar. They're anatomically similar because of a common ancestor. 
even though they may or may not have the same function. Okay, so when we look at sort of the structure of limbs in vertebrates, there's usually often one bone like the femur humerus, two bones, tibia fibula or radius ulna, some wrist or ankle bones, and then metacarpals, phalanges. Uh, if you look at a horse foot, similar, although some of them might be fused, cat, whale flipper, bat wing, bird wing, similar bone structure, but used for very different purposes, flying, swimming, running. Even your hands and legs have different functions because we're walking upright. And if we've refined those hands and legs for running, moving, also moving, grasping and stuff with our upper bodies. As opposed to analogous structures, which mean different. Okay, so these are, these are body parts that serve the same function, but are very different structurally. Uh, so if you look at um, limbs used for swimming, a shark fin, okay, a fish fin, cartilaginous, a penguin wing, okay, a dolphin wing, okay, even though these two might be homologous because they're both vertebrates, you compare them to a fish, very similar streamlined type flipper appendage for swimming because that's what works best, uh, but very different structurally. Uh, we often use like bird and bat wings and compare them to an insect wing. Okay, bone structures with feathers or flaps of skin versus an insect wing that's kind of clear or a moth that's kind of feathery, no bones. Okay, used for flying, used for the same function, but very different structurally. Usually that means you got to go way back for a common ancestor. You got to go further, further back means they're more unrelated. A uh, third thing under anatomical evidence is vestigial structure. These are structures that are fully developed and functional in some groups of organisms, but then sort of have disappeared in other groups of organisms. Uh, we talked about that uh, pelvic bone in whales, which is still used in crocs and lizards and amphibians, but not used in whales anymore. Uh, in humans, this is sort of a list over here of <clears throat> some of the things, and I don't want to go through all of them. Uh, we often think of the appendix, uh, which is that little pouch where our large intestine, small intestine, joins to our large intestine. There's a little pouch here. What was that pouch for? Was it, uh, was it immune function? Was it uh, digesting more plant matter? Did it used to be bigger? Was it a pouch or stomach? You know, what's it for? Now it just sort of does nothing that we know of or it gets bacteria and it gets infected and then causes us trouble. Uh, why do we have a, why do we have tail, fused tail vertebrae? Uh, why do we get wisdom teeth? Okay, we don't eat, grind that much. Uh, why do we have muscles to move our ears uh, like some prey animals? Some animals can kind of move and rotate their ears. Uh, why uh, nictating membranes or pointed canines? Um, things that are obsolete that maybe in the past a ancestor may have used for a particular purpose. Uh, Finally, under anatomical evidence, uh, we have embryology and developmental biology. Embryology just looks at, a big one is at vertebrate embryos, and we all start sort of very similar. Uh, we all have these gill slits, these uh, our pharyngeal pouches. Uh, we also have postanal tails, uh, which some things they do develop, like a fish or a salamander do have tails and gills. Uh, whereas in some vertebrates, those pouches uh, become our jawbone, our vocal cords, and ears, eustachian tubes, some of those things. Okay, so that points to a common ancestor because these, are, these um, embryos are all very similar. But how, um, how it can, as it develops, they will sort of turn into different things. Uh, in developmental biology, a lot of the genes that control this, we call Hox genes, uh, which is just short for homeobox. Uh, that controls the body plan of the organism. 
And if there is a mutation there, okay, because mutations are the raw material for evolutionary change, especially in Hox genes. Uh, they've done this work with flies and so forth where they go in and they start mutating Hox genes that control uh, different areas or different sections of the body, and they get eyes with no flies, or no eye, flies with no eyes, or four sets of wings or extra legs. They've gotten legs to grow out instead of antennae. Uh, just weird things like that. And evolutionarily, a lot of times that's a negative thing unless the environment's changing and there's a random mutation in the Hox gene that controls that development, might be a positive thing. And it might, again, talk about having more offspring passing on that mutation and now you have natural selection and descent with modification. And finally, number four, biochemical evidence. Uh, this is just kind of in our last previous chapters where we've talked about DNA and DNA expression. Uh, and we mentioned this in that chapter, that all living organisms use the same basic biomolecules, uh, DNA, RNA, glucose, different, you know, sugars, lipids, proteins. All those are very similar in all living organisms of any complexity. They use the same triplet coda uh, with, A's, T's, G's, and C's, adenines, thymines, guanines, cytosines, and how those are ordered specifies certain proteins. Uh, those amino acids, those 20 amino acids that they use to build their proteins are all the same. Uh, and so that unity of life is often evident when we st start looking at biochemical evidence. Uh, we actually use that, and we'll use that in a lab here, this unit, uh, where we do DNA-based sequence comparisons. A uh, big one is cytochrome C, which is used in the electron transport chain uh, in cellular respiration. And we look at the am amount of amino acid differences. And so you go back, you know, start with human and the more differences you have, the more further away the ancestor was, the more similar the cytochrome C protein is in the amino acid sequence, the more recent the common ancestor. Uh, you oftentimes like on AP tests and stuff might get a chart like this where it gives you a bunch of different organisms and you say who's mo who has the most common recent ancestor. Well, you just start comparing lysine, 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 uh, and then glucine, glutam glutamate, glutamate, his, iso. So you'd probably say chimpanzee and human, okay? And then also the horse and the zebra are very similar. Okay, if you look, arg, arg, lice, lice, hiss, hiss, and they just, the last two are slightly different. Uh, so you can start comparing in the same hemoglobin that carries oxygen in the red bloods, um, what's the difference in certain parts of those, that sequence of amino acids, the more similar they are, the more recent the common ancestor, the more differences, the further away the ancestor was, and they sort of that divergent and, and, you know, the, the, the scientists start can relate different things together using biochemical analysis. And finally, to end the chapter, there's a special section uh, in your book that talks about the Tree of Life Project. And this is just science. It's a collaborative effort of scientists around the world uh, sequencing different parts, different genomes, and trying to trace it all back to sort of a common ancestor and they've got thousands and thousands of different things sequenced and laid out, uh, laid out on this little tree of life here uh, and kind of to show how everything is sort of related. So it's kind of cool, kind of a neat little uh, graphic to look at uh, to see kind of the little branches as everything starts in the center and slowly kind of branches out sort of who's more closely related to you kind of see who your cousins are right uh, in the animal plant fungi bacterial kingdoms uh, and the different colors here are just showing you the basically the three domains of life is is how they have this sort of broken up here uh, so that wraps up chapter 15 uh, hope you enjoyed these videos and hope you learned a lot.